Hello everyone and welcome to RP2000 Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. RP2000 is an intended simple career mode for Realism Overhaul that starts on January 1st, 2000. There is a video explaining the concept on my channel. Uh, this is a live stream, or the audio will be from a live stream, where I decided to run through the first few nodes to see about inconsistencies in pricing and also whether some parts needed to be moved or not. And so here I'm explaining to the audience the structure of the tech tree, which is mainly community tech tree. But I also added these things that simulated getting parts from set manufacturers that are currently around. But anyway, I'll let myself explain to you with my live stream voice. And so we'll go to the live stream audio now. But all we have is the stuff in start. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the VAB and take a look at these and see if we think that the part costs make sense. <laughs> so, uh, so just in the start block, we're going to work through it. And not all the parts are in the right place, mainly because Realism Overhaul and Raider Nick both add parts based on other parts. And I didn't catch that initially because the script I had from Dialer Roots that lists all the parts did not include those. I guess that's the best way of putting it. We have an Arabi probe core, that makes sense. Arabi sounding rocket, Explorer 1. So the probe cores will say those are fine. Let's see their price. 450 for the Arabi core. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, why should this one be 450 and that one be 2100? The Explorer 1 probe is just 450, so maybe we should put the others as 450. Uh, Vanguard 3, 500? Maybe. So this core and this core are suspicious. They're not stock. They're realism overhaul modified stock parts. It says RP0. It's actually RP0 for some reason, even though RP0 isn't in here. And I'm gonna change it to just 450. I mean, we're talking about 450. If we were using the dollar standard that RP0 has, 450 would be $3 million in current dollars. That's a lot for a sounding rocket probe core. I don't think it should be that expensive. Launch our first vessel only gives 3,200 on for that. I think we'll just cut them down to 45. Hey, uh, why don't we just cut them down to 42 while we're at it? <laughs> you can... Well, I mean, nowadays they just put an Arduino on. I mean, right? I mean, uh, it's tough because, honestly, you could you could make a sounding rocket very, very cheaply these days. Okay, so those have changed. Now, the fuel tanks we have are an Arabi fuel tank here. They're 175, 115, and this generic one is... Probably something we don't even want to have here, but these Aerojet little thingies, I don't know. They seem awful cheap compared to this Altair one. Again, I'll, I'm just uh, thinking of it in terms of uh, we're multiplying by 8,000 basically to get current dollars. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just go with multiply by 1,000 to get current dollars. Does that make more sense? Uh, uh, would you pay $800,000 for a Caster 1? How much would you pay for a Caster 1 exactly? <laughs> Maybe we sort of have to judge it by the procedural one. Mm, this Tiny Tim though. Gosh, uh, is this Tiny Tim, it's all down to Tiny Tim favoritism. I mean, why should the Tiny Tim be that much cheaper than say a Waxwing kick motor or the procedural one? I mean, let's let's bring them out. Let's see. Dry mass 5, wet mass 8. Actually, it's 24, it says. I don't know why here it says 5 and 8. Yeah, I don't want to use Tiny Tim either, but... You know, it's not what I want to use that I have to think about when pricing these for a tech tree. People... People will use it. Alright, well, I'll sort of moderate the prices on the others that I had set. So we have a Juno nose cone fairing and set instrument section and then the error BD spin module, so that's fine. Well, we'll deal with the Delta 3 parts when we get to them. Error B decouplers, 
Uh, Galileo Atmospheric Probe Heat Shield Bottom. Seems like it's probably in the wrong section, huh? Uh, well, we can put that under Enhanced Survivability. I think that's reasonable, right? No, you can't. We just have to make it up, but we're doing it... You, you can object if you think I'm doing something wrong, so <laughs> that's why you're here. Uh, launch Stability Enhancer, Payload Decoupler. That seems really expensive for a Payload Decoupler, huh? Or considering it's just a ring. Hmm. And I know Raider Nick didn't price his parts at all. So there's that too. I'm gonna say 18.6. I'm just gonna go order of magnitude less. Fins 15? I guess. I mean, we could make them cheaper, but... How much is landing gear? 100. That seems pretty expensive, actually. Gear fixed. I'm gonna say... 5. <laughs> so, 5,000 bucks for that kind of landing gear. I think that's already m more expensive than it probably ought to be. I don't know why it has that one and not the nose one, by the way. They sort of go together. Um, Mystery Goo 800. It sort of depends on what kind of mis- I mean, the containment unit could be very sophisticated, but all the experiments tend to be really expensive, but then that models the fact that payloads tend to be very expensive. What do you- uh, you guys can tell me. So again, we're saying that that Mystery Goo unit is $800,000. I don't know why that's the only science we have. Where did the thermometer go? So, Airby nose cone. Hmm, I don't know if that's to... Payload parachute. I'm gonna cut down on the prices of that, those. This does have... Oh, this has the temperature and pressure data in it already. So that's a little bit better. Maybe I'll keep that, because it's got the data stuff already. We'll keep that. But parachute? Oh yeah. Okay, well, I'll up the price on the landing gear then. We'll say 20000 for one of the landing gear. That's still probably more expensive than it has to be, but... Okay, well, let's build an Araby. Uh So, first of all, let's pick up a contract. So, we're gonna try and work our way through the tech tree. I think we've seen enough on the start section. So, we will try and get the science to get to the next bit. So, launch our first vessel. Take that contract. Escape the atmosphere. Well, we could get, gather science from Earth. I think that's what we should do as well. I haven't changed the contract thing. Our oil pricing might, yeah. Okay, so now we've got 28,000. But, you know, we'll, we'll have to spend on increasing pad size and stuff like that. Actually, right now we're on stock sizes, so because I don't have custom barn kit, I don't know if I want custom barn kit. So it's 18 tons max on the pad, and we've got 30 part limit on the in the VAB. So what should we be launching? Well, let's go with the Airby probe core. Let, let's let's see about the Airby parts first. We'll launch an Airby first. So, you get the Airby for free, even though technically it's an uh, Aerojet Rocketdyne thing, I decided to put it into uh, as the start thing, so you have all the Airby parts. So there's the nose cone, the probe core, and there's a D-spin module, there's a parachute, we want the, th there's a whole payload thingy, but uh, where does the payload go if uh, this is the parachute? The parachute's the full size of the thing. Oh, red is good. I like red. Place between the main body and SAS module. Okay, well, I assume this is the SAS module. Let's put it this way around. Uh, so I guess the D-spin module... So decoupler attached between the parachute and the main body. Okay, wait. This says... The spin module says main body and SAS module. This says parachute and main body. Use only on flights that require recovery. Okay, main body. We'll have a... I don't... There's a 150 and 150A. And there's the Air, Bed, Air B Junior. I guess we'll start with a 100. Why not? Kerosene and IRFNA. Okay. Well, 
Ah, no. Okay, there's the engine. And then this is the SRB. So there's the SRB rocket fin, and then there's the main rocket fin. I don't know if they go in line. Let me take a look at the picture. Yeah, they're in line. This is already 1,892. So it's not cheap. That's like 1.8 million. What's costing so much? Oh, well, the body and the... Uh, it really piles up, huh? Sounding rocket launch clamp. There we go. I'm sure that will work perfectly. Oh, well, some modules are disabled until you unlock the proper node in the R&D tree. This, this little thing only lasts for 2.5 seconds, though. So, it has a despin module. When does it spin? Hmm. <laughs> how, how do we spin say uh, Are these supposed to be at an angle? I don't even know. Is it gonna spin on its own? It should hot stage? Oh, if you say so. Why did it even bother <laughs> with this SRB? There isn't even enough time to hot stage. Whatever, we'll get the launch our first vessel and possibly gather scientific data from Earth things done, right? Okay, I guess I'll have to go fast. Whoa, for heaven's sake, no! Okay, we've gone all ballistic. Whoa. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, uh, log pressure data, transmit, uh, log temperature, transmit. Well, that was realistic though. Both ignite at the same time? Well, that makes sense actually. But that doesn't stop us from flipping. How did, why did we suddenly go sideways is the question. Force on the clamps? I don't know. I mean, it is a suspicious clamp that they just randomly resized. Hmm. And its node is in the wrong place, too. Let's see. Redstone and Juno launch clamp. At least this one has a node at the bottom. I'll take that. I don't know about the other one. Okay, fine. We'll light them both at the same time. Why not? But we don't have any contracts. We've got 21.8 science already. I might need to rethink how much science certain things cost. Escape the atmosphere. They got a lot of tests the thing in flight over Earth. They're, they're pretty lucrative, actually. Okay, go. Uh, oh, it's better. Oh, I forgot to throttle up. <laughs> ah, shucks. Okay, okay. Okay. It's better. We can try the parachute. Ta-da! What does the despin module do? Whatever. 26 meters per second is awful fast. Does it inflate more than this? Oh yes, that was just a drug shoot. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna revert it in this case since we're testing, and I'll th remember to throttle up this time. Okay, throttle up and launch. Ooh, straight up. It's still vapor and feed lines. Let's try it here, maybe. I don't know. Let's keep this up. It's very stable now. No. We did ignite at the same time. It didn't work. That's I already tried that. That's why. It, it shut off. I'll, I'll do it again just because I guess people didn't pay attention at the time. 
So, so it's lit. It's actually using the fuel, and then it shuts off. See, it used a little bit of the kerosene. Hmm. Maybe, maybe we should put a real payload somewhere in order to weigh it down or something. I don't know. You know what? Let's just use the engine engine. Instead of the SRB and see what happens. Still attached to the uh, block the thrust of the second stage. No, that's the whole point of uh, the way that the decoupler of it is made. It's got a hole. I mean, we're gonna decelerate after the SRB. I mean, there's no chance of not decelerating. It's got plenty of oomph on its own. Who cares about the SRB? Doesn't even need to spin. I, mean, I guess we'd need an SRB to get to space, though. But maybe a bigger SRB. Hmm. We got upper atmosphere stuff? Uh, no, it's just over the shores of the Earth. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna revert this one. Let's be creative. Let's say we were really doing this uh, career mode here. And we were having this problem. And we saw that we have, what? Uh, 2.77 thrust weight ratio. Now we could put the next time. We're still using Araby Jr. stuff. That's another thing. Maybe I should just go with the main Araby. It doesn't seem like much Delta V, actually. Is this a better thing at all? Let me see. Aniline, uh, the usual stuff, aniline and all that business, right? Kerosene might have been better. <laughs> Honestly. This is heavier. Really? How much was this one? This was 40 seconds and got 2,359 meters per second. What is wrong with this? Why is the Araby Jr. better? The Araby, Araby Jr. has 280 seconds of vacuum ISP. Um, I feel like we need to have a talk with Raider Nick about this. Why does it have a little bit of UDMH anyway? That's for ignition? It ignites with UDMH? So yeah, it's because this has a 280 second vacuum ISP, I think, but then... Hmm... It still doesn't explain that much of a gap. This 913 doesn't seem right at all. It's got a little label on it like it's a model rocket too. <laughs> what if we did this? That still has a thrust weight ratio of 1. But that doesn't seem like a whole lot of delta V. There's something horribly wrong. We don't have procedural tanks right now either. We also don't have radial decouplers. Hmm. This Airby Jr. is much better. What if we... Just ditch that entirely and put the Airby Jr. and then put this. That seems better. This is 2000, yes, Miko. But we're starting with Airbys anyway because they're just our generic sounding rocket for any sort of space thing. So, if the electric charge stayed, I'd time warp to morning, but it's not, so. Okay, ignition. And launch. Uh, I, which one? Uh, are you got a track concept? Uh, well, you can do that, but um, we uh, the way the tanks connect, it's hard, and we don't have a radio adapter right now or decoupler. Oh, 
Oh, that apoapsis is really going. Uh, we've got so much drag because we're still low enough in the atmosphere. Eek! But, uh, it's gonna, uh... Just shy. Maybe we can make it non-recoverable. I mean, do we need the parachute? I don't even need the spin module. We're not spinning. I don't know what this, the spinning isn't necessary. Anyway, we'll get high in the atmosphere science. Okay, we'll recover it even. Let's try and recover it. Um, Pre-deployment, we don't need it that early. Oh, I, I need to check what our... We're, we're using stock comms, I think, but I don't even know what kind of comms we have. 100,000 antenna rating, I guess. Okay. Okay, well, we can ditch the spent stage, though. We're going down really fast. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to... Oh, it's slowing down. Okay. Ah, uh, terminal velocity. Good times. And it's going sideways. Did you see? It started to go up. The nose cone got body lift. <laughs> okay, I thought I had set the parachute to pop out by now. What? No. It snapped? No, oh, I accidentally pushed... Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. It was changing buttons on me. Oh, well, let's see if it survives. Nope. Okay, well, at least there's that. Okay, back to vehicles. Oh, no, I didn't want to revert. Oh, well, whatever. This is just testing. Okay, so, oh, uh, no, uh, we just want to... Make it non-recoverable. Let's see, how much Delta V... So, 2,800 we have right now. Um, I'll think about recover... Let me just take off the D-spin module first. Uh, it could... Maybe that's enough. And we could still recover it. Let me change the parachute while we're here. Oh, I can't change it like this. I can't change it in the, maybe, yeah, I can't use the action group thing. So I can't change it in here, but I will be able to in flight. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, throttle up, SAS, I guess, and ignition and launch, launch. Uh, a little bit early. Failure rate. Yeah, we're not doing test flight right now, so there's that. That's a whole other business. We have the merciful situation of having perfect Arabies. Ah, uh, no, not quite. Let me just revert this. You know, since it has the extra mass, you know, because it's got two stages, Maybe the little SRB won't accelerate or decelerate it as much. Maybe we can put the SRB on. Okay. And it's only a mere 7.74 now. Maybe that'll work. Okay, here we go again. Going for space. Okay, well that's successful. So just make the top of it heavier. Oh, it's paused. Oh, because the SRB was crashing. There we go. That's safely in space now. Okay, we got the contract fulfilled. We're world's first milestone and everything. It doesn't say to recover it. <laughs> We'll try to recover it. We could transmit the data. This is almost too easy though. We do need test flight, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll decouple this stage. It's coming down much faster this time. 
But it's going into flight mode. Well, wiggle mode anyway. Let's see, can it slow down? Every time it changes attitude, it pulls tremendous G's. But yep, it's it's going horizontal. But yeah, I would definitely say that this is all a little bit too easy right now. Then again, I'm also very experienced. And I'm trying to make RP 2000 for people who are used to playing stock. So maybe I should just put a pause on that. And of course, we still have to afford all the building upgrades and everything. I mean, it feels like the first flight's in stock. So that's probably pretty good. I mean, the first flight's in stock aren't exactly crazy either. I talk well they have to adapt to some things I'm not saying that it has to be exactly stock they have to the thing is to minimize how many things they have to adapt to you know no tooling none of that business uh, you know but they'll have to adapt to not having the reaction wheels that powerful or reaction wheel anyway what the heck are we what guys did we just actually land on our nose and balance for a while? I can't even see the ground though, but we, we must be on ground. Because we're above sea level. Okay, well, cover vessel. Okay, we got some science. We got too much science. We've got too much science.